Hey guys, how we doing? Here at the end of the year, I'll tell you what, you can't, everybody thinks I'm, it's feeding time. Everybody's coming around here, I'm gonna feed. No, I'm not. You can go back out to pasture. <laughs> uh, anyway, at the end of the year, I can't believe this 40 is 50 degree weather. We got lucky, getting real lucky this time of year. Sheep like it, they can be out there in the pasture laying around instead of having to curl up inside a run-in shed here to try to stay out of the weather. But so they get to spend a little extra pasture time they normally don't get. Which brings me to the subject. I had somebody ask about the setup, my pastures, the pens, how everything is set up. And you get people that, you know, they're gonna raise sheep, they don't have any yet, or they're just getting started and they're just putting up their pens and they're wondering, okay, what do I have? So that we're gonna take a few minutes. I got an overhead for a Google that you can get a good look at what we have here and I'll bring that up in a minute so you can see it. But I'll tell you where I'm gonna start. I am gonna start with the catch pen. And I know I kind of harp on the catch pen, but I'll tell you what, we started out catching sheep without a catch pen, and it was a bear. And once we got that, it got a whole lot easier. So I'm going to suggest figure out where you're going to put your catch pen and then build everything off of that. That way everything comes back to the catch pen. And when you're bringing in new sheep, you can unload straight into the catch pen and then move them where you want. Or, you know, in my case, I could put some here and leave them for maybe a week while I'm isolating them, keeping them away from the other sheep, and they could just stay in the catch pen if they had to. So figure out where your catch pen's gonna go. And then when you go from there, you can design after that. So in my case, there's the catch pen. My first building is my first, excuse me, my first pen or dry lot pen is right here. It's about 40 feet square, comes off into the barn. It's got the run-in shed. Now, I'll be honest, the main reason this pen is here is because my water hydrant's right over there and I got power right over there. And then come January when it's cold and the wind is snow blowing and it's windy, I don't want to carry water. I'm not going to mess with hoses. I'm going to take a five gallon bucket, add, fill up that each time. I'm in good shape. So my first pen was kind of designed just because of the availability of water and power. Now, if you're down south, you don't freeze not going to be a factor for you. Off of my first pen is the first pasture. All right. One thing to take note, all pens have gates in the corners. All pastures have gates in the corners. Don't put them in the middle. Sheep like to come up along the fence. They'll naturally funnel right into a gate. You put a gate out in the middle of the pen, you ain't going to get them in the gate very easy. Now, the second reason I did that, I had a, my first pens here. Then I had to start coming down away from my pins because I had my tractor barn over here. But as you can see, I've got my gate line here that I can come right here into the center pin. And this center pin is going to be just about the same size, a little bit smaller than the other one, but basically about the same size. And as we come through this pin, it's also got a gate going out to that pasture, which is where the guys are right now. And when I get done with that, I have a third pin and another gate that connects on that one. Now that's, that one's a little weird. It's got some of the fence panels up on the outside over there, privacy panels. This is the pin when I first got the move lines, they were going in and I had no idea what they were gonna do. They came from a bigger pasture. This is a five foot fence, but that was only four. So I wasn't taking any chances when I first got the move lines. I put privacy panels up just so I knew they weren't gonna be going anywhere. And off of that pin will come another pasture that I don't quite have finished yet. So I have three dry lot pins in a row. All three connect to the catch pin. All three have gates blocking off the pasture. So right now, if I had sheep in this pin and I need to put them in the dry lot, I've already got the sheep in this pin in the pasture. I just close that gate, open a gate over here, run those sheep all the way up to the catch pin, catch them, do what I wanted, run them all the way back, line the gates back up, and we're done. So that's kind of what you want. If you're making dry lot pins, make sure they all connect so you can get sheep from one end to the other all the way through because these guys, you know, you're dealing, in my case, I'm dealing mouflons, black bellies, they're a little bit wilder than your standard sheep. So it's not easy sometimes moving these things. You, if you watch my vaccination video from last week, you can see those things bouncing off the fences and stuff. So 
you got to have it so it's kind of easy to move one into the other. All right, let's get the Google overhead so you can see that. We'll talk about pastures. All right, let's start way over on the left-hand side over there to pasture number one. As you can see, the yellow line is not fenced. That fence is not in yet. All the red fencing there is currently in place. That yellow on the far left-hand side, that is, I'm cleaning up that fence line right now, taking down dead trees so they won't fall on the fence. And then that pasture fence will go up early in the spring. That right there is my ram pen. I do not let my ram run year round with the ewes. So about March, he would move over to a pasture by himself and that'll be his. Pasture two, that is about a 50 foot by not quite 200. And pasture three is 100 foot by about 200. And as you can see, I've got a yellow line in the middle. I plan on splitting that pasture. So those pastures are only about a quarter acre in size. Now, I like that because I plan to rotate my sheep three, through those three pastures. They'll probably spend 10 days to two weeks in each one, constantly moving over, then moving back. And that way the pastures have a chance to re regenerate themselves because sheep can be pretty tough on pastures. But it really comes down to what is your style? Are you going to take 5, 10 acres, 15, 20, whatever it is, one big giant pasture and turn them loose? You can do that too. There's no reason you can't do that. I tend to, I've got more ground farther away on the other side, but I tend to keep them in close. So I'm going to keep them in very small pastures and I'm going to rotate them, like I said, every 10 days to two weeks. Now, that means for me, I'm spending a lot more money on fence. I got to buy a lot more fence if I'm gonna make real small pastures. So that's the downside to that. But I like raising the sheep. I like having them out here where I can see them. I like looking out my back window and seeing them, not off on the other side of the property where I don't know where they're at. Not so much for security. It's just, I'm having fun raising them. I wanna see them. And the other advantage is, uh, in most cases, I've seen the ram breeding most of the ewes. So I've been able to keep track and, and mark stuff like, like that down. I'm going to get into that in another video later about the management on the breeding and stuff. But having him close by allows me to do a better job of that. So I like doing that too. So that's the way I've set it up. Real small pastures, all interconnected, so you can move easily from one to the other. That's the main thing you really want to do is move them easy because they're tough to work with. And I'm going to rotate. We'll rotate every 10 days, two weeks pasture to pasture. If you see on the right side there's a blue line, that's a possible fence maybe late next summer and that would open a bigger pasture over in that area. We're going to kind of see how it works. You can see over to the side over there I've got a pin mark rams and then up near the top middle there's one with the doll ewes. Those are my son-in-laws. The doll ewes is where he keeps his, his ewes there. The rams, we were going to keep all rams over there. He's kind of talking, he may split that ram pin and then we may, he may completely turn around put the ewes up or the rams up front if he does that then I might fence in that area with that blue line and then we can put ewes right next to each other I don't want to put my ewes right next to the ram pen uh, I'd like to leave a buffer zone but we'll see if that does we'll, we'll see how that works out later in the year well you know what the girls thought it was feeding time I'm gonna go get some grain let's go ahead and do some chores right away all right we're gonna see if we can do this one-handed here corn and pellets, as I mentioned once you fall. Oh, yes. You ready? Is everybody ready to eat? Huh? Now, I will tell you, not everybody's going to come in. Them mouflons are going to stand back there, and they ain't coming in. No. Stephanie there, she likes her food. She's going to be right up there. There we go. There's part of them. See if the rest of them come in. Here they come. If you notice, all but that one, way out there in the pasture, she ain't coming in. She will stay out there until I leave. And there's one little black belly that's a little bit on the squirrely side too, ain't she? <laughs> all right, let's go get some hay for them.
I give these guys about two pounds of hay a day each. So with 14 sheep, that's 28 pounds. But they're probably getting, you know, over 30. Let's get, here's the bottom of the last round. We'll throw that up in there for them. All right, let's go give them some hay. Mind me, the golf cart's got kind of a dirty windshield. But I'll tell you what, when the wind's blowing, the snow's blowing, it's nice to have a cover on the top. That is for sure. I will throw them some hay on the ground and some hay in the feeder. I mainly like to do it that way. So if anybody's picking on anybody, everybody's still got a shot to get some hay. There we go, girls, boys. Still got a few standing in the pasture. They're a little. They're a little squirrely, as you can see, still out there. But that's got me, guys. Hey, for this time around, thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.